Hi people, how are you doing? I hope you're having a goddamn great day. Welcome back to the channel. Today we will be discussing how you can replicate the Pep Guardiola 4141 system into FC24 for your game, of course. Along with the, the, the 4141, I've also gone ahead and tinkered and replicated and recreated a few tweaks and changes to it, but the 3241 system that goes alongside the initial 4141. So we will be discussing both of these formation setups and tactics in today's you know tactics video if you guys don't mind before we get any further on into the video smash that like button down below please that would be great subscribe like share comment do all that good stuff it would be absolutely appreciated from yours truly anyways enough waffle let's hop on straight into the goddamn video okay so starting off with the base formation of course i have gone ahead and selected the 4141 and I have changed two positions, or it's essentially four positions, but I've pushed the two central midfielders further up the field into the cam positions, the left and the right cam, as well as I have gone ahead and narrowed, as well as converted the left and the right midfielder into left and right wingers. So, therefore, it would be one goalkeeper, two centre backs, two full backs, one DM, two attacking midfielders, two wingers, and then, of course, one striker. So, progressing on to the tactics. Now, the tactical vision that I think best suits and reflects a very solid, realistic Pep Guardiola system is the wing play, through for various different reasons, of course. One, it allows you to tinker with various different things if you would like to incorporate a bit more of a faster-paced build-up. If you're trying to get Erling Haaland more runs in behind, you can choose to change things, alter a few, you know, tactical tweaks. But at the same time, we do tend to see quite often out wide, the Man City players tend to combine very nicely, whether it's the fullbacks and the wingers or potentially the two number 10s and the respective wingers um, out wide, trying to generate a bit more space for the likes of an Erling Haaland to try and operate in and try to exploit. So like I said, I think wing play suits a Pep Guardiola system. As for the defense and the defensive style, I've obviously put it onto pressing off to possession loss. We have seen countless times through the entirety of Pep Guardiola's reign at Man City, the pressing when out of possession is absolutely essential to the success of the side. We saw against Real Madrid the other night. Yes, they ended up losing, but they ran for 120 minutes non-stop, just consistently closing down spaces, forcing the opposition into, you know, uncomfortable situations. And even against Chelsea, they were absolutely shattered, but they still pressed, they still probed, they still made it very uncomfortable for Chelsea to have a lot of time and space on the ball. So you want them to be able to press when out of possession, looking to effectively try and win it nice and high the field and turn it over into Manchester City's possession. As for the team width, however, I've set this to 60. Now, this is a somewhat considered balanced approach. It will create those man v man type situations throughout the entirety of the field, but it will also encourage the team to press a lot more centrally. So you want the likes of a Rodri, a uh, I need to say to Bernardo Silva, but if you are playing Bernardo Silva more century, you can want and require him to press in those central areas along with Kevin De Bruyne, Phil Foden. Just making it very difficult for the opposition to generate a, a fluid movement in the midfield for themselves. As for the depth, now this does change if we do, you know, swap over to the 3-2-4-1 system, but for the time being, for the balance approach, I've set it to 75. You can maybe push it up to 80, but I think 75 provides a good happy medium. It encourages the team to push nice and high the field with the center backs and the fullbacks also developing nice and high into the opposition's half. It also allows you to try and pin them in their own half at times, especially with the base formation in play. As for the offense, now the builder play that I've selected is slow build up. We have seen countless times again throughout the Pep Guardiola reign. He likes to build out from the back, from the goalkeeper restarts, playing it out shorts to the center backs who will then look to develop it further forward into the midfield. and so on and what this does is it allows the center backs to show for the ball from those goalkeeper restarts it allows you to also somewhat generate those those patterns of play that we are so used to seeing with a manchester city side those little triangle passages of play with the winger the, the central midfielder and of course possibly either the fullback or one of the other midfielders or maybe even the strike if he does choose to drift out wide so you want to try and have these passages of play but at the same time if you're looking to speed things up a bit more you can look to shift and alter it and we have seen countless times again Pep Guardiola is very flexible when it comes to, you know, his tactics. He's got his principles and he's got his way of playing, but he's also capable of adjusting it to the personnel in the side. And that leads me nicely into the next, you know, change that we have made. The chance creation is set to possession. Now, essentially, Pep Guardiola's whole main aim of the game is to try and keep the ball, maintain it, rotate play, wait for the opportunity to arise and then strike when the iron is hot. But you have a, a very strong, tall, physical, six foot five, 
Norwegian beast who likes to make those forward runs, who likes to exploit the space in behind. So if needed, if required, you can choose to change it from transcreation being set to possession to potentially either forward runs that will obviously push the team as a whole further up the field. The, 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 the number six will also get nice and high up as well as you can set it to direct passing. Now this will also encourage the wingers to get in behind. So maybe if you're playing a Jeremy Doku, um, possibly an Alvarez, as well as an Erling Haaland up front, you can have it on, on, on direct passing. That will, like I say, encourage them to break in behind, exploit the space in behind the opposition's backline. But more essentially, more, more so, I would associate Pep Guardiola's football with possession. So keep it on possession and then you can tinker with it then on out. As for the width, now I've set this to 60. This is the lowest it can possibly be set to with the wing play tactical vision being set in place. But with the balance approach, we do see quite a lot of compactness, a lot of little five yard passes, a lot of interchanging. We see the likes of Foden and Silva interchange on that right wing side, whether Foden goes out wide or, you know, Silva comes inside or vice versa. As well as we also tend to see the likes of a Grealish and a uh, Kovacic or Nunez or even a Kevin De Bruyne interchange positions as well but you want to try and you know compact that system when going forward it likes it does tend to build the the, the quick pass and move rotations that we do also tend to see very effectively with the pep system as for the players in the box now I've set this to seven again it does increase but seven allows for at least three to four players to be in and around the box you want to try and surround the likes of your star striker in Erling Haaland with gunmen in and around him as well trying to generate a bit more space for the main man up front but at the same time with the sheer amount of bodies in the box it provides ample opportunities for your players to provide good cutbacks to the attackers in the box finally onto the corners and the free kicks as for always it is set to four so guys progressing on to the instructions now starting off at the back with the individual instructions for edison now these don't really change if you've seen previous man city videos you will have seen that I haven't changed these. Come for crosses and be a sweeper keeper. Edison, one of the best in the world at being a sweeper keeper, understanding the, the pace of play, understanding how to read the game off of his line, collect the ball, circulate it back into play. Very good at playing under pressure. So again, I don't need to explain too much. Very good at also claiming those aerial balls when they are fizzed into the box. And that's why, justifiably so, I've selected come for crosses and of course, sweeper keeper. Further forward now into your back line, we've got John Stones as well as Ruben Diaz. Now, for the Diaz role, he is said to have a conservative set of interceptions. Now, you want to try and create that cover type center back, whereas the likes of John Stones, of course, it's not a, a very well-kept secret. He does get into the midfield. He does develop into that area, adding an extra body into the attacking you know, side of things. Um, so for his role, you want him to be able to join the attack as well as step up, being nice and close, being nice and aggressive towards the opposition players, engaging with them, trying to minimize the space that they have in and around the box as well. And essentially, you do want and expect the likes of a Ruben Diaz to try and cover for his, obviously, centre-back partner. So, people, out wide now to the fullbacks. Both Walker and Vardiel have the same roles, with Vardiel having a slight tweak to it. So, both will be set to a balanced attack. Now, we don't always see the fullbacks bombing further forward. If the opportunity is there, they will look to attack down either the left or the right-hand flank. More so with Vardiel, or could either be Ake. Um, in this role specifically, if he does choose to stay back, you want him to invert, or if he does get forward, you want him to quite often create that underlapping run. Quite often, we see the likes of a Jack Grealish or a Jeremy Doku on that left-hand side, hugging the touchline, trying to create the space, whereas the, the left-back or the left-sided centre-back does get forward, but more so a bit closer to the, the natural midfield. As for the defensive positioning for both Walker as well as Vardy Elm, it will be set to step up. We do tend to see them engaging again very aggressively with the opposition wide players, trying to get nice and close and minimize any attacking threats that they have to offer. As you'll see here for the likes of a Carl Walker, a balanced attacking run, again, just like with the likes of Vardy L or Ake. Um, he can choose to get forward, join up with the likes of a Bernardo Silva or Full Foden, but not always doing so. Sometimes choosing to stay further back helps support the defense, maybe trying to minimize the, the risk of any potential counterattacks. That's also a possibility, and I think that's why have somewhat minimized the attacking outlets of his fullbacks. The run type, however, for the likes of a Carl Walker, we have seen him, you know, invert into the midfield every now and then, or also provide that overlapping run that he is so good at doing. So you want to have him set to a mixed set of, you know, instructions. And then, of course, for the defensive position, just like with the left back, as well as the right side of centre back, 
you want him to be able to step up and engage with the opposition player. Okay, so further forward now into the midfield, we've got the likes of Rodri. He is set to cut pass lanes for his defensive behavior. A very good zonal approach, looking to try and intercept and break up play, and that's very much what we're trying to do here with him. The attacking support is set to basic, or a balanced approach, I should say. Every now and then, we do tend to see Rodri very effectively get further forward. And of course, with the, the role that John Stones has, where he also tends to get forward, he can more or less push Rodri further up the field. And we did see against the likes of an Aston Villa, Rodri opened, I'm pretty sure he opened up the scoring, or he may have scored the second goal. I'm not, I'm a bit, I'm a bit hazy. But the, the attacking run that he put together, the attacking movement that he, you know, had in place for that, you know, goal that he obviously scored, he was further up the field. He was adding to that attacking line. So you want him to still have that element of, of you know, attack to his game plan. And I think a balanced attack will allow him to do this. Of course, he is the only natural DM in the or on the field. So he won't always get forward. But when he does, he can also be very effective with the attacking outlets. In terms of the interceptions, it's set to normal. And then, of course, for the positioning freedom, when obviously looking to build up from the back, you want him to be able to be the deep lying playmaker, dropping a bit deeper, collecting the ball off of the center backs, the defenders, or even the goalkeeper, and looking to rotate play further forward. He is also very good at switching the play. So when he's on the ball, likes of a Jack Grealish, who will be looking to maybe sometimes hug the touchline, or even a Bernardo Silva on the opposite flank, they will often be very much open and looking to try and expose the opposition. So don't be afraid to try and switch the play with a long ball over the top to the opposite winger. In terms of the defensive positioning, he will look to try and cover the center because your two number eights or your two number tens will look to try and cover the wings and, you know, try and solidify that midfield defensive area. Speaking of which, De Bruyne and Foden, they do have very similar roles with a few tweaks to it. So we'll start off on the right and move over to the left, starting off with Foden. He is set to come back on defense, looking to try and help the likes of a Rodri or just the defensive areas of the field, um, dropping a bit deeper, trying to, you know, fog the passing lanes, intercept play, break up play, and then win the ball back very effectively. The support on crosses will be set to balance. Sometimes we do see the likes of a De Bruyne or a Foden breaking into the box, other times on the edge of the area looking to try and facilitate and create. Now, the, the, the main difference that we see here between Foden and De Bruyne is the fact that Foden is allowed to drift all over the place. He's allowed to have that free roaming role, drift left, drift right, drift into that wider right space, interchange with Bernardo Silva. And you want to give him that free roaming role to be able to pull players out of position, operate in the little half spaces, allow him to express himself on the offensive end. And then finally, the interceptions will be set to aggressive, allowing him to aggressively press from the front, looking to win the ball nice and high up the field. As you'll see here for the likes of Kevin De Bruyne, a very similar role, aggressive interceptions, come back on defense, a balanced approach for the crossing runs. But we see here that I have selected drift wide. Now, when De Bruyne has been played on the right hand side in the full Foden, you know, current position, he's also set to drift wide. Quite often you see him, you know, interchange with either the right or the left wing, depending on which side he is playing on. He does tend to operate in that wide half space very efficiently, very effectively, whipping in crosses and looking to try and, you know, attack that little half space that is quite often generates with the amount of pulling and stretching that this Man City attack tends to do. So you want him to drift wide, interchange with, you know, the likes of a Jack Grealish in that wider, you know, left channel. And speaking of Jack Grealish, as well as Bernardo Silva, they also have very similar roles with a few tweaks in between. Both will be told to come back on defense. It is absolutely essential that they help the fullback out. Of course, Jack Grealish is very good at tracking back, picking up the extra runner, picking up that wide space, looking to try and defend from back to front. Um, in terms of the chance creation, however, it is set to a balanced width. So if the likes of Vardiel does bomb forward, he sometimes also tends to overlap, even though we have set him to invert. At the same time, with the balanced width, if he does drift inside, it can allow for the likes of a Kevin De Bruyne to operate in that wider left channel as well. The support runs, however, is set to target player. Jack Grealish is a very physical winger. He doesn't overly like to break in behind or, you know, trying to, you know, come too short and interchange with, with the midfield as much. He can, you know, drop a bit shorter. He can, you know, get involved with the more central areas, but more so his ability to hold up the play in that wider left channel is absolutely underrated. The ability to knock the ball into a Jack Grealish and have him hold up the play, lay it off to uh, an on-running Vardiel or an Ake or maybe even a Kevin De Bruyne and looking to pass and move consistently rotating into the correct positions. That's what you want from the likes of a Jack Grealish. Finally, the interceptions will be set to aggressive as well as the support on crosses will be set to balanced, allowing them to, yes, break into the box every now and then or hang on the edge of the area and rotate the pace of play, waiting for the best opportunity to be created. 
As you'll see, Aphrodox of a Bernardo Silva, a very similar role, come back on defensive balance with as well, but the support runs are set to balanced. You want him to be able to sometimes, yes, break in behind, other times come a bit shorter, interchange with Foden, or as well, just like with Grealish, have that physical play where he can hold up the play and then back into the opposition and link it up very nicely in those wider channels as well. We have seen countless times Bernardo Silva, very underrated attribute to his game. His, his low sense of gravity very much helps him with the ability to hold up the, the ball in those wider channels. So you want to have him set to balance so he can incorporate all these various different aspects into his game plan. And then finally, the interceptions will be set to aggressive, just like with Jacko Grealish, as well as a balanced crossing run. So further forward now into the likes of an Erling Haaland. He is set to having a balanced width, as well as the ability for him to get in behind. We have seen countless times this season, last season as well. I mean, even at Borussia Dortmund, the ability for him to arc his runs from those central areas out wide and then obviously in behind looking to exploit the defense. And that is exactly what the get in behind paired with the balance width will tend to do. The interceptions will be set to aggressive and that allows him to try and, you know, get nice and close to the opposition center backs, trying to close them down as well as trying to close down the opposition goalkeeper, forcing errors and mistakes out from the back. And then finally, the defensive support will be set to basic. He doesn't always drop a bit deeper, but if required, if needed, he can choose to, you know, slot into the, the defensive shape, make sure it's very hard to play into the middle of the park, trying to, you know, cut out those passing lanes. But at the same time, he can also choose to stay further forward and be an offensive outlet. So guys, switching over to the 3-2-4-1 system, it pairs up very well with the 4-1-4-1, allowing for John Stones to operate in the midfield and allowing for the likes of Vardiel and Kyle Walker to just drop a bit deeper and be a very good cover for the, the back line. And I must say, it's a, it's a stroke of genius from Pep Guardiola. Of course, he is a genius as it is, allowing for one of the fastest players in the Premier League to consistently be in the back line. So that when he does go up against a, a team that does have a pacey player, whether it's Manchester United and Marcus Rashford, whether it's a Real Madrid and Vinicius Jr., he has the likes of a Kyle Walker to try and man mark that player out of the game and somewhat minimize the opposition's offensive outlet. So moving forward, of course, I still had the 4-1-4-1 in play, but then I manually dragged various players into the positions that you see here on screen, essentially creating the 3-2-3 system. So, therefore, it would be one goalkeeper, three centre backs, two DMs, two attacking midfielders, two wingers, and then, of course, one striker. So, progressing on to the tactics, the tactical vision is still set to wing play, and there are quite a few tweaks and changes to it. Pressing off to position loss, it is absolutely essential. This is a very good high pressing, um, high, you know, line. Uh, formation and, and set of tactics so you want them to again be very aggressive when out of possession of the ball looking to win it nice and high for the field and turn it over into your team's favor the team with the sets to 60 with the depth now being set to 90 a very very high line that can definitely be exposed but you are playing a possession-based brand of football so therefore you need to very much look off the ball when you are in possession of it but at the same time with it being set to 90 you pin the opposition very much in their own half the wingers nice and high and wide, operating that wide space. The interchangeability with the number 10s, as well as your back line, nice and high, looking to win the aerial duels, recirculate, you know, the possession, and um, just keep it in the opposition's half at times. Onto the offense, it is said to slow build up as well as possession. Now, I would advise, you can change it, but I would advise you keep it as is. Because you are going to be playing nice and high up the field, you need to maintain possession and with the chance creation being set to possession, it allows for players to show for the ball, operate in those little spaces, consistently have the ball carrier or give the ball carrier options to pass to. Because if you, I, I often find with the, the forward runs or the direct passing, it tends to not always give the, the uh, player that's on the ball enough time and space and even options to try and pass to. So he can be crowded out and that can lead to turnovers and essentially leads to counterattacks on your very high line. So you want to try and maintain possession as best as possible, building out nice and slowly from back to front, generating those passages of play very effectively, and waiting for the opportunity to arrive in the box. And because you do have four midfielders, and because you do have you know so much attack going forward, those opportunities tend to generate themselves quite a bit with this formation in hand. As for the width, now of course I have also stretched this up by 20, set to 80. And you want to try and fit as many players in those central areas as possible and then you need to try and generate as much width as you possibly can so your wingers will be nice and wide attached to the touch lines in this case and it will allow for quite a bit of space for your central midfield who have four players there by the way it'll give them time and space on the ball to try and work their way and their magic trying to unlock the opposition's back line speaking of which the players in the box i've set this to 
No, not to four. I set this to eight, and that allows for four players to be in and around the box again, waiting for the cutbacks, waiting for the crosses to be fizzed in to the box. And then finally, we've got the corners and the free kicks, and they are both set to four. Okay, guys, so taking a look at the back, starting off with Edison, he's got the same role, come for crosses, as well as be a sweeper keeper, as well as Diaz. He is set to conservative interceptions, looking to, again, try and cover for the likes of a Vardial, as well as a Carl Walker. Now, for the likes of Vardial as well as Kyle Walker, they are both set to overlap. Now, you want to try and have this occur on a, on a frequent basis, allowing them to develop further forward, be very involved in the attack. We count as times against the likes of Chelsea. We saw the likes of um, Ake developing further forward, inverting into the midfield at the same time, allowing for the likes of a Jack Grealish to hug the touchline. So you want this to happen with the overlap, as well as the likes of Kyle Walker down the, the, the right-hand side. Now, the one thing I would say is, it alternates. So when the likes of Vardial gets forward, Carl Walker and Diaz tend to stay back. And the likes of a John Stones will also stay slightly further back. And vice versa when Carl Walker gets forward. But you can't always choose for this to happen. So you just have to go with the flow. And hopefully they don't both attack at the same time. Um, speaking of which, John Stones further forward as well in the, the DM position. Now, him and Rodri also have very similar roles, if not the exact same roles. Both will be set to tight mark. You want them to be able to pick up the men on the edge of the box, minimizing the space, minimizing the risk factor of the opposition popping off shots or creating for the attackers as well. The attacking support. Now, what I noted was both Akanji or Stones, they can play this role, but both um, Stones and Rodri or Akanji and Rodri were able to quite fluidly get forward. One would attack, the other would defend, and vice versa. Now, with the balance attack in play, this will hopefully allow you to do it. Every now and then, though, both will get, go forward, and it does, you know, cause, cause a, a, a mild heart attack, and every now and then, both will choose to stay back. So it's, it's a very alternative thing, but more times, it can also lead to one breaking forward and the other staying back. So you'll just have to deal with the, the, the mixed bag of results with it being set to balance. But again, you still want them to be able to operate further up the field. In terms of the interceptions, it will be set to normal, with both of them also being set to the deep line playmaker. With the goalkeeper restarts, showing for the ball, collecting the ball, getting on the ball from the, the goalkeeper or the centre backs, and looking to play it further forward. And then, of course, both for Rodri as well as Stones, they are set to cover the centre, looking to try and shield that back three as best as possible. As you'll see, a full box of a Rodri. Same role, same instructions, same everything. Now, I've just realized that I've had Bernardo Silva in the full Foden role. And yes, Bernardo Silva can play, you know, in that uh, right attacking midfield position with full Foden out wide on the right hand side. But just to keep things consistent, I've put full Foden back in the number 10 role with Silva out wide. But again, both can play in either position, so it doesn't really matter. But speaking of the number 10, both De Bruyne and Foden will have the same instructions going forward, especially with the system. You want to try and generate quite a bit of movements just behind the likes of Erling Haaland, allowing for the, the, the individual players to pull the opposition players out of position, opening up space, operating in those half spaces. So in order to do that, Full Foden will have the same instructions, come back on defense, balance crossing runs, free roam, as well as aggressive interceptions, along with the likes of uh, uh, Kevin De Bruyne. Come back on defense, a balanced approach, as well as free roam. Now, of course, you want to try and get De Bruyne into those wider spaces to try and whip in crosses, supply the back line, sorry, not the back line, the back post with that dangerous cross. But at the same time, you also want him to be very physical, very dominant, getting on the ball, whether it's, you know, a bit deeper or slightly further forward and looking to try and run the pace of the game. And then, of course, the interceptions will be set to aggressive, not normal. It should be set to aggressive, allowing for them to aggressively press the opposition. Okay, so out wide now to the likes of Jack Grealish. He will have the same role and instructions as before. Obviously, operating slightly further up the field with a bit more passing options in and around him. But nonetheless, you would still want him to be a physical target player on the left-hand side. As for the likes of Silva, his role does change ever so slightly. Come back on defense, a balance with, but this time you want him to come a bit shorter, interchanging with the likes of a full Foden, operating uh, more centrally at times. But we saw against the likes of Chelsea, he tended to hug the touchline a lot more. I have seen in the past when the, the likes of Pep has deployed the system against Man United, we've seen Silva operating in that wide left, that wide right channel, and often drifting inside, pulling players out of position, creating chaos, creating havoc, not knowing whether you should stick or twist with the, the very fluid system that that silver you know runs in place of that right hand side so you want him to be able to drift inside every now and then interchange with the, the midfield 
and allow for Phil Foden or even a Kevin De Bruyne to try and operate in that wide right space. Of course, just like with before, it will be set to aggressive interceptions as well as a balanced crossing run. And finally, we've got the likes of Erling Haaland. The only change that I have made for the system is the mix attack. It's not set to direct, part, sorry, not direct passing, get in behind. It is now set to mix. And I will continue to say this, but with a system like this, you need a strong physical number nine that's going to look to try and hold up the ball and lay it off to the individual playmakers in and around him. If he's consistently looking to make those runs in behind, which he can do, it kind of breaks the, the, the focal points up front. It kind of, you know, dissolves uh, the attacking fluidity further up the field. So you want him to be able to be a, a solid target man as well as every now and then, you know, break him behind and exploit the space, which essentially he will tend to do. At the same time, he will also look to try and arc his runs, drift along the back line and be very effective as a focal point in the central areas at the same time. The interceptions will still be set to aggressive with the defensive support still being set to basic. And there you have it, guys. That is how I would replicate and recreate the 4141 paired up with the 3241 Pep Guardiola set of tactics into FC24. I hope, I pray that you guys have enjoyed this video. And if you have, please share the love, hit that like button down below, subscribe if you are new. Out of 10, I would give the system a solid 9.5. It, it pains me how good the Pep Guardiola systems work in FC24. It really does, but they are so goddamn good. I would recommend this to anybody and everybody who's willing to listen, of course, to try and use the system into their individual career modes. You'll have a whole lot of fun. The interchangeability, the fluidity, the attacking outlet is... The defensive security is... I just don't like Man City. That's why I've marked it down and I can't give it a 10. So, you know, a bit of bias, but I don't care. It's my channel. You guys can let me know, though, down below what you think of the current Man City 4141 system. Anyways, until the next time, until the next one, I hope you have a goddamn smashing day and I'm 